Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Tasno, and we're going to talk about. This is from HITC Football. You know, go and subscribe to them. They have a very good channel, and they're talking about football. They the way they present things is very. It's much more easier to understand, especially for most people. And that's very good. Um, I actually believe so. It's actually very good that to do that. It's, it's, it is good. And I like that. And I like that. Honestly, I like that. This is why this is a reaction video on why the new Super League is still disgusting. So let's talk about that. Let's actually, you know, react. Let's take it to the start of the video. And if you want to watch the full video without commentary, bro, subscribe to this channel, watch it. And if you like these kind of types of content, subscribe to my channel. Let's go to this video. On the 18th of April 2021, we saw one of the most disgustingly selfish acts in sporting history, marking arguably football's darkest ever day. 12 of the supposed biggest teams in the world agreed to join together and create the European Super League in which none of them could be relegated, so they could distribute wealth solely between This, I want to add, this happened during Covid as well, where there was no fans, so the and fans decided to turn up and protest, especially Arsenal and United fans. United fans ended up getting a game cancelled as well at one point. Amazing. They even got partnerships for United cancelled. The big, the big clubs did do it. And the media only cried about it because it affects their pockets, not because uh, it, it, it's for the fans. It's not true. They don't care about the fans. It benefits them to not have a European Super League. But they'd be the first ones to try and bid for the Super League. The ch TV channels like Sky Sports, like BT Sports, etc themselves. Luckily, backlash from fans, players, the media and so on led to its collapse almost instantaneously. However, the sides involved faced little to no sanctions, letting them off scot-free. And now, less than two years later, the Super League is back. This is a story of the return of the European Super League. Let me start off this video by explaining who is behind the new Super League. A22 Sports, a company founded by Barcelona, Juventus and Real Madrid have been the driving factor behind bringing back the Super League, whilst also trying to reform it. Now before I cover exactly what A22 Sports have said in their statement, let's just take a look at the basics of both what we know about the Super League thus far, and what we already know about the three teams that Yeah, let's talk that, yeah, let, that is going a little bit. Firstly, as I spoke about in the intro, the Super League was originally made up of 12 teams, with the likes of Agnelli, Bartomeu and Florentino Perez being the driving factors behind it, with them claiming that the teams they were in charge of could not keep up financially. This is especially funny because if you take a look at the list of the most expensive transfers of all time going into April 2021, when the Super League was first proposed, they had been involved in 9 of the 10 most expensive transfers of all time, with Jao Felix to Atleti being the only outlier. Now I don't know about you, but in my opinion, if you can afford to spend over £100 million on a player various different times, therefore inflating the cost of football is worldwide, then I don't think that you can complain that things have become expensive. And this isn't just recently. You can go all the way back to the Galactico era, or even further back to decades like the 80s, where the top Italian and Spanish sides were spending way more than the rest of the world could compete with, despite the fact they weren't even challenging in Europe, with just two sides from either Italy or Spain winning the European Cup between 1967, which was the first time a British side won the tournament, all the way through to 1988, over two decades later. In this same time frame, teams from the Netherlands won it five times, England eight times, Germany four, and even nations like Romania, Scotland and Portugal saw teams succeed in Europe, meanwhile the two countries spending the most were not winning. Now at this point, did we see Barca, Real or Juve try to ditch the rest and create a Super League? No. And that's because they showed something which to this day they still express, which is that they really don't care about if their fans have something to celebrate, as long as they're the richest sides in the world. Making this even more ridiculous. Um... I disagree. I disagree with that statement. Uh, those three big clubs are on top of the mainly. They have been on top of the, and been very successful for the country for a long, long time, for decades. The reason for that is they don't care how they do it. 
is that they do it. Normally, the teams that spend the most uh, win, basically. Normally, the teams that actually spend the most win the most trophies. They spend smart, they will win. Nowadays, it's about recruitment. Recruitment has to be top notch. It's not about how much you spend, it's about recruitment. And if your recruitment's really good, you'll be successful eventually. But yeah, I don't think they don't care about the fans. The fans are the ones setting the standards of this football club. They are keeping that standards. They're not allowing the standards to drop. The, the teams that do, uh, don't actually care about the fans are the teams that have neglected the standards of the football club. For example, Arsenal. For example, Tottenham. They don't care about the fans. I know Tottenham does not have standards. I'm not, bit, I'm not saying that they have standards. But if they want to win, like the fans there accept the mediocrity. They'd be celebrating trophy, like a trophy if they get top four. Arsenal fans, right now, third biggest club in, in England, would celebrate top four. Right now. Arsenal fans, young Arsenal fans, who have never seen Arsenal win a league title, who's never experienced Arsenal being at the top, even though they were promised to compete with the likes of Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona and all these teams. Even with that, they wouldn't be able to um, handle that. They, they just wouldn't. They don't care about winning. The fans have allowed the standards to slip and the club is now just taking in the riches. All they do is get top four or stay in the league, do okay in the league, and they can get away with it. That's how, you know, Nikola Arteta actually got away with eighth, eighth, fifth. The standards never dropped. No manager at Arsenal would get away with that, not even Arsene Wenger. And Arsene Wenger got away with top four for a longer time, brainwashing fans into thinking that are um, top four is like a trophy even though the reason he kept his job for this long was because he won trophies for the football club just a bit of you know perspective here because I think Barcelona, Juventus and even Madrid they do care about the fans because the fans are making sure the standards are there and they do listen to the fans Right now, Ancelotti is under pressure of being sacked for a reason, because of the fans. Or PSG, for example. Uh, the, the performances on the pitch, now the strong, strong the training ground, they're setting the standards. I know we shouldn't, I shouldn't, I'm not condoning it, but I'm just saying, we could, in England, we could protest. We could actually um, have empty seats at the stadium. Empty seats at the stadium, the stadium actually caused Wenger to resign in the end. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move so on. the Premier League has been used as a scapegoat for this whole thing. Now I'm going to shock everyone watching this and say that I can sympathise with this point of view, with I myself being somebody anti-Premier League and a lower league fan. However, instead of trying to resolve this issue, the sides mentioned of seeing this institution they think is destroying football, and essentially just said, it will copy them, but do it even worse. Where on earth is the logic? Now I'm going to pause here because otherwise this will just turn into a rant video which I don't want it to be. And so uh, yeah, I've got to say it all. Like, honestly, I just think that, you know, a lot of fans feel like this. I think that money's killed football. I don't think so. It's just the way of the world now, isn't it? Billionaires own football clubs. Now most most a lot of billionaires own football clubs. They're gonna spend that kind of money. They're gonna spend millions. It's been like that it depends on it. You spend money you regenerate. As long as you spend that money that you generate is fine. So I'll go back on to giving a simple explanation on what the Super League actually is and what it may mean for the future. So to start I'll go over what's actually happened. 
The company made by Juve, Barca and Real named A22 Sports released a statement going over the following things. They claim to have spoken to nearly 50 European clubs since October, with the vast majority agreeing that European football is under threat. To put it simply, A22 Sports said it's time for change in European football, as such of glorious European traditions can no longer compete. They've supposedly accepted all the issues with the former Super League system, and so proposed a multi-divisional league system with no permanent members, and promotion and relegation that would involve up to 80 teams each year. Now before I cover anything, it's important to note one thing, which I'll focus again on later, being that this new European Super League is only going to include teams from the European Union, meaning no British sides will be involved. Moving on, if we take a look at the man in the video, we can see that he's also the CEO of A22 Sports, named Bern Reichardt. Born in Germany, Reichardt started his career in marketing before starting to work in the media, most recently having been CEO of a German TV channel. And right. so now there's one big question to ask. Does this man have any experience in running a sports governing body, or is there any real reason why he should be the man controlling the future of the beauty? He's a businessman, that's And the right. answer to that is a big fat no. But let's not sit here and act like the people who run these big clubs are completely stupid and would put a random guy in charge of their dreams. So why is Reichardt in charge now? And that's because right now this proposed Super League system is not a scheme to make European football more fair. It's just a marketing tactic to give them more power through PR. Reichardt is a marketing and advertising genius who knows what he's doing and has time and time again proven himself in drawing huge audiences to be on his side. To put it simply, this man is charismatic and smart and so would have deliberately put this statement out now for one reason or another. And in my opinion, this is just the... The reason why they do this, that when the first time it came out the European Super League, the reason they did this is to send a message to UEFA. If you do not act up, if you do not change things in the Champions League, right, we then watch. We are going to make our own league. We're going to... And we're going to ditch your league your Champions League, for example. And guess what? The Now, by 2024, Europeans, it's, it's a mini European Super League now. The UEFA Champions League. It's, that's what's going to happen now, soon. Um, not now, but soon, it will happen. And I think the same thing is going on here. Like they're trying to put pressure on... Uh, the on UEFA, if UEFA can give these teams more money, they can try to um, do something. Really, if UEFA can give them more money, then they will accept it. I don't think this is this is something that's not gonna disappear. I think it will or may eventually happen. You know, the Premier League eventually happened, you know, the founders of the Premier League, they ditched the BBC and ITV, you know, games, and they wanted live sports and Sky Sports, you know, and that's how Sky Sports was, you know, the games on Sky Sports. For more money. It's the same thing happening here. History is repeating. next stage in terms of trying to bring an audience around to the idea of a Super League, with A22 knowing full well it's impossible right now to make it happen. However, one thing they can do is lay the foundations down so that in the future when UEFA slip up, which they will, they can give it their all to try and gain control. And so I think once the Super League has finally gained control, Rykart will be dismissed and given a huge bonus where somebody like Perez would then be the leading man. And the thing that's so particularly dangerous about this is that when big corporations gain control, more often than not we see the rich minority succeed and the majority start to struggle. A key factor behind the Super League movement right now is that UEFA supposedly have a monopoly over controlling European football. However, if you then pass control over to people who are no longer neutral... That's true. I don't think UEFA is neutral. I think UEFA has its flaws. Um, but they are a, like a governing body. They are not. Uh, cooperation and if you allow corporations for example the head of Madrid uh, to be leaders of this of of a European Super League and you'll end up in a league where you know t the big teams the big uh, giants European giants they'll have control they'll have majority of the money hence there's going to be issues, there's going to be issues, there's going to be a massive monopoly. It's basically 
capitalism more or less you know but they're all rich so the thing is the, the even the like a lot of the teams are rich but the thing is the smaller teams that are in the euro the smaller revenue gain teams the european leagues will have no chance you know will actually have no chance i'm just saying it, it is it's true then things will only get worse as the rich clubs will monopolize everything a22 have claimed that sides don't have control over this one control and power and rich people. silenced by uefa will have to face sanctions supposedly for making that they want a lot of people a lot of rich people want control and power which is why this is happening in the first place no i know a lot of people want control and power but like is in this case this is the, this is what's going on in my opinion want to give teams more power and that uefa should not be the sole group in charge now in theory this kind of makes sense but also contradicts some things they've already said and is utterly ridiculous if you don't have a supposedly neutral group in charge which by the way already favors the rich sides anyway then football would become total chaos and whichever teams have the most money therefore have the most power we've not only seen this in different sports but quite literally in every walk of life and so it's undeniable in my opinion that a corporation owned and run by three clubs cannot be in control of every single team in europe as well as this, if you look at almost any association aimed at looking after clubs worldwide, they've reacted negatively to the Super League. If you're looking for an example, just take a look at this quote from the European Club Association. Now, if the organisation whose sole job is to look after European clubs are saying that something is a farce and will not look after sites, then it's fair to say that a biased organisation's promises are unfaithful and most certainly have an ulterior motive. If, slash when the Super League goes through, there is absolutely nothing that can stop them from playing a fixture like Inter Milan vs Real Madrid four times a year, each time being in a different continent, with fans having to either travel thousands of miles each game, or choose to miss out on watching the side they love. As I said earlier, in my eyes this is just one stage of the Super League's big plan to soften people up and then swoop in at a later date. And the reason for all of this is jealousy. From teams outside of Europe's top 5 leagues being jealous of the success of the big boys, having once been dominant forces in the continent, to other sides in La Liga for example watching as Barcelona and Real Madrid spend hundreds of millions each year, meanwhile they're forced into selling their stars to the Premier League, jealousy is everywhere. Teams like Real Madrid are jealous of the Premier League and have used it as a big factor for the Super League. True. This is because teams yeah. in the Prem are able to spend and make they even more money than Real it's been like and that's all because time. instead They're of allowing two big this. teams to have all the cash, the Prem instead distributed it out further down the table, which in turn grew the league quicker, actually making the big sides richer than they would have been had they just hoovered in all the money from the beginning. Now instead of seeing this and deciding to do the same thing, Real Madrid and co would rather just create a Super League as it's quicker and easier regardless of the negative impacts it may cause. Furthermore, if you take a look at the biggest argument about why La Liga can't replicate the Premier League, it's all about how the Premier League is in England, making it easier to market to the world. However, if language and culture of the country was a determining factor, then surely we'd be seeing World Cup winning players like McAllister and Martinez playing for Spanish teams rather than playing in an overcast England. Now once again, I feel like I've gone down the ranty route which this video is not meant to be, so let me summarise and conclude. The fact is, despite what they may say in their promotional videos, the Super League is not about looking after football clubs, it's about making money. And nowhere is this more obvious than if we take a look at who's currently running it in a marketing and media genius rather than somebody who's been in football for years like Arsene Wenger who'd be more suited to running a footballing governing body. Furthermore, another very important thing to mention is that English... I disagree. I don't think Wenger's uh, capable of running a governing body. He just He's just a good employee. So whatever you wait for say, he'll say. And he expected something like this anyway. Like a European Super League, he said it years and years ago. Like something like this can happen, and he's not capable. He's just a good employee. That's it. He's just a good employee. He's not a person. He's he is a football person, of course. He's been in football for many many years, but he's he's a good employee. With uh, the European Union. I mean the Euro I mean the European Super League they they want they want their share of the money and the globalization of football, which is why they wanna they want this European Super League. Who's it gonna affect the most? The fans. The fans now have to spend thousands just to see their uh, team play. But who's it gonna benefit the most? T V companies? There's going to be more revenue to invest because now 
Inter Milan, AC Milan, Barcelona, Madrid, Juventus, these kind of teams will have money to play with now. They'll have the kind of money that the English teams have. Which is why they're doing this in the first place. This is my opinion on on that. Yeah, let's go to the end of this. So After yeah. the first attempt at Super League in 2021, the Prem sides involved were forced into signing agreements, which prevent them from joining the Super League or this even being in negotiations video, around one. As well as this, the government are reportedly working on new legislation which would help give fans more power, making it almost impossible for an English side to ever end up in a Super League. Furthermore, German sides have made it very clear they would never end up joining one, as well as the biggest French side PSG staying clear, particularly important as their owner is also in charge of the ECA, showing that it's really only a few sides in Italy and Spain that would ever show interest. And so it begs the question, will the Super League ever actually happen? And in my opinion, in this form right now, probably not. I simply think it's too hard for teams to form a breakaway league where they're in full control. However, I could imagine a UEFA or FIFA licensed tournament being very similar. With changes to the Club World Cup plan, it's clear to see that people yeah. are somewhat worried about what the big sides can do, and so don't be surprised if football goes even further in the direction of focusing more on money rather than fan enjoyment. However, as I mentioned earlier, a tournament which is quite literally less enjoyable than what we have now will not come into fruition. Interestingly, I do have one main prediction for the distant future which I think could very much happen, and maybe the only way to prevent a supposed Super League. If we read between the lines, what these clubs want is more money, and therefore to globalise the game. The biggest way we can see this is through pre-season tours, where clubs will travel to the opposite side of the world, where the big boys often end up playing each other in front of huge audiences. And so if you take this in, and remember that we also saw a successful on-pitch World Cup during the winter this year, I would not be surprised if in the future we see the football season be split in half every campaign, allowing teams to go on extra tours across the world, making them more money, whether that's part of the Club World Cup or invite-only competitions, which would take place at a Super League. The main issue people had with the Super League was that it didn't work for the fans, particularly the local match goers. However, if you can remedy that issue by keeping all of the big competitions as they are, whilst also allowing the game to globalise, you'd find the best of both worlds. You see, we know that the Super League isn't about making the game more fair for everyone. It's about making the rich richer. But if you can allow the rich to make twice as much money each year, whilst potentially even reforming current European competitions to be more lucrative to the smaller sides, the future of football might just have to reach a compromise, which downsides have already been settled on in the past year. At the end of the day, the Super League will not be happening soon, but we may still see money change the beautiful game, whether that's for better or worse. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. There was a lot more that I wanted to cover in the Yeah, um, this is the thing, um, I, I want to say this. If you like this this video subscribe to HITC football you know they, I reacted to them they they done well with this video I know it was a more opinionated video but here's the thing this is gonna be a long long video I'm gonna say that now but yeah I, 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 I feel it um, I see the thing is with the European Super League it is all about globalization of European football. That's what they want. They want the share of what the English teams are getting. This is why this game in the first place. And yeah, I gotta say until the fans step up again. The fans are the main voices. They can make the noise they can if they step up nothing will happen literally the european super league would not happen but i know that uefa are trying to do like a similar super league now and the club world and the fifa world cup that's gonna be like that as well and the club world cup for example they're trying to do things like this you know to get more interest and globalize football it's not and earn more revenue to appease the big European giant football groups anyway if you like this video subscribe to me this is a reaction video long one until next time i.e. tomorrow at this time five o'clock I'm out